Start it. Hello, and welcome to Love in the Time of Hydra, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. 10th Anniversary. Oh! Do it again, do it again, do it Hello, and welcome to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, the 10th Anniversary podcast called Love in the Time of Hydra. If you are here watching live, that means you are at L.A. Comic Con with us. You Woo! October 7th. And on October 7th, 10 years ago today, a lot was happening in the world. All About That Bass by Megan Trainer was the top song in America for the third year, week in a row. Oh, the number one film at the box office was the David Fincher classic, Gun Girl. And one week after Kyle MacLachlan made his Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. debut, he was thriving because on this day, 10 years ago, they announced that Twin Peaks was coming back. important thing that happened on this day 10 years ago was the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2, Episode 3, Making Friends and Influencing People, aired on ABC at 9, 8 Central. Hi, I'm Jamie Jira, I'm your host. I'm here with uh, some amazing people. I got my co-host, Tony Paletto. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to be here with you all in person for the first time. Thank first you. time, we've got Screen Rant's digital content creator, our, one of our great friends. He's an awesome host, Joe Decklemeyer. Is Woo! extraordinaire host. Uh, we are former and maybe one day future Marvel uh, podcast hosts together. Brandon Davis is here. Um, I'm curious, is anyone in the audience here experiencing Love in the Time of Hydra for the first time? Have you all listened to this podcast before? Okay, awesome, great. Welcome. Um, so that you know what we're about, Tony, why don't you tell the people what this podcast is? This is an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. 10th Anniversary Podcast. We are watching every episode on the 10th anniversary in which it aired and talking about it. Jamie has seen this show probably an embarrassing amount of times. I've, I'm seeing it for the first time. So I have only seen this show up to the episode we're talking about today. So, hashtag protect Tony. No spoilers, please. I want to watch this show fresh for the first time. Is anybody, has everybody here seen the entire show? Or is anybody, okay. So most people, all right, great. So this is uh, no spoilers. Later we're gonna be talking questions and getting questions. And you can ask whatever you want as long as it only pertains to the first season and the first few episodes of the second season. At a certain point, I'm gonna leave the room. We're kicking out. Best segment of the show, Tony leaves the room. Then we talk about spoilers uh, and you guys can talk about whatever you want. Yeah, uh, Joe, you have not been on our show before. I have not. Um, I, you should tell the audience about your current MCU journey. Oh, okay. So, uh, I have been doing an MCU full rewatch in chronological order. That includes all the Netflix shows, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, The Inhumans, Cloak and Dagger, you name it, I was watching it. So it includes it all chronologically. I'll we'll see if I have a list. I bet you. I've seen yeah, the list. Yeah, I've seen the list. It's, um, a list. It's, it's, it's broken down in episodically with Age of S.H.I.E.L.D. also. But it weaves in so well. Let's see if I can find this list. It's here somewhere. And you finished S.H.I.E.L.D. now. I did. I just finished S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm on a... Uh, it, it scrolls for a while. For our listeners, it's a never-ending scroll yeah. of Marvel. So there's, uh, there's 108 entries in here. God, I just finished Age of S.H.I.E.L.D. I am on Runaway Season 3. Ooh. And then we go to uh, Avengers Endgame. Wow. Oh, wow. You're crushing through. Give it up for Joe. That's yeah. really impressive. Um, and of course, uh, BD has been on the pod before. Uh, if you want to know about BD's history with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., go listen to our Season 1, Episode 21, uh, Ragtag. Now, on Lido, we don't normally share news because there's not like a lot of news going on in the world of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but there is some news this week. And uh, BD, as our fellow news friend, drop the news. What's going on? Uh, from our friend Russ Burlingame, who, who found this one out, Elizabeth Henstridge is going to be Lex Luthor's daughter on Superman and Lois. So, I uh, guess it's like, I mean, the uh, uh, brainwashing is going to work. Yes. Yeah, she, yes. Uh, I, do you guys know this character well from the comics? We need Jenna here yeah. to yeah, drop knowledge. She has a, she has a, I guess, is it Lena Luthor? Yeah, Lena Luthor. She was on Supergirl. She was on Supergirl. Yeah. Oh, it's the, she, it's the same character. The, well, in Supergirl and Superman and Lois are going to be different universes. Oh, so okay. Be like, oh, she has big shoes to fill. I know what that fandom's about. Well, the Arrowverse fandom in general is very passionate. Yeah. yeah. Well, good for her. She's directed an episode of that show. I think she's directing more in the final season, too. Oh, I didn't know that. Good for her. She directed an episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We'll talk about it in seven years from now. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, like, you're taking season, seasonal breaks. We are. We're, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a seven-year-long podcast because it was a seven-season show. Tenth anniversary every time. 
And we have a Patreon where we do other stuff during the hiatus. So we did about half of Firefly. We did a Christmas movie starring uh, Brett Dalton. Uh, you know, we, yeah, we will let me handpick things like, to keep putting things out during the off season. And I think in January we're gonna do Agent Carter's 10th anniversary. Oh. That'll be on the Patreon too. It's only a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even commit to dinner plans. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just love the show and want to keep it alive for as long as possible. Uh, but um, we are talking about uh, season two, episode three, making friends and influencing people. Uh, this episode was written by Monica Ozu Green. Uh, she wrote uh, the Well Seeds and the Only Light in the Darkness in season one, so we have seen that work before. And uh, Bobby Roth is the director. Previously directed The Hub, Tahiti, and End of the Beginning. So we've got a lot of people back. Of course, the cast has our seven series regulars. We've added one. Nick Blood uh, as Lance Hunter is now officially a part of the group. Give it up for Lance Hunter. Good guest stars got BJ Burke, Reed Diamond, Henry Simmons, Simon Cassianides, uh, Maya Stojan making her debut as Agent 33, and Dylan Minnette is back as Johnny Gill. He was in the uh, first season. He's got ice powers. Ooh. It's Jack um, Shepard's son you're talking about. That is Jack Shepard's son. Oh my yeah. god. I never put that together. <laughs> I watched this episode. I was like, hell yeah, this is the perfect one for me to go talk about. Wow. Go back. Didn't he quit acting? I think he did. I feel like he did 13 Reasons Why and was like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm absolutely done with this uh, business. Um, okay, so in the episode, it's revealed that Gemma is now working for Hydra. Oh no, is it real? I, I watched the promo and like they really wanted us to think she was working for Hydra. <laughs> got released. I, ha I had a very visceral reaction to that. And then about 30 seconds later, I was like, she's undercover. Well, right. my, well, of course she is. And then I, I felt kind of dumb. You're like, no, Gemma, why? <laughs> I do think if anyone from the team would go to Hydra, it would be her, though, because she does care about science, I think, about I think that's the thing that I love the most, where she says that her loyalty is to science. Mm -hmm. And I felt like if, she, if any of the characters were to go to Hydra, it would make the most sense for it to be her. I, I don't think she would ever. Even, like, maybe she's the most likely, but it's still totally unlikely to me. Yeah, so. very unlikely. And I also thought, I liked the way that scene was written when she said I'm loyal to science, because that was right after the conversation with Colson where he was like, well, just, like, tell selective truths. Yeah. So she was like, yeah, with science. If you guys are doing science, I'm down. But also, I don't think she could ever actually go with, like, a villainy route. I don't think she's kidding. Yeah. Pro no, I don't. Maybe we have six more years. Uh, yeah. Jim <laughs> is villain era, Tony. I don't know. Yeah, sure. We'll see. Maybe she's evil in the future. Um, all right, I do want to hear uh, your just kind of basic thoughts, Joe. How do you feel about this episode? Like, does it where does it rank for you in the whole scheme of the show? All right, so the, the the biggest thing that I took away from this episode, and I don't know, maybe it's watching it back now, but Fitz, the actor uh, in the mm -hmm. cast, yeah, yeah. he is incredible. Yeah, he is absolutely incredible as Fitz, and uh, he has so much of my sympathy with from what what happened to him in the first season, and I love uh, his relationship with Matt. I think that their relationship to me is uh, like the strongest relationship in the show, and I and I like where it goes. I like where it goes, and I like and I love Mac. I think Mac is my favorite character on that show. Heck yeah! I wish he was in the MCU. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's debatable. But you know what? Maybe Mac is only in this season, and we never see him again. Who knows? Tony is. always do this. <laughs> and, I, and sometimes they're kidding, and sometimes they're not. There's no deciphering. I feel like nobody's ever really dead in any show that we watch, right? Okay. Clearly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, BD, uh, you came out of, because uh, BD's staying with us, and he came out of the room today, and he was like, this is a good episode. <laughs> like, surprise! I'm like, BD, they're all good episodes. Yeah, that's exactly, actually, exactly how it happened. Tell us why you think this was a good episode. Uh, I, th I think it was just the uh, multiple layers of what's, like, Coulson is probably one of the least interesting characters in S.H.I.E.L.D. by this point. And I say that as like, no, 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 no. I say that. Everyone's throwing tomatoes at me. No, no, no. I, I say that as a compliment because he, well, maybe, maybe not least interesting, but like the coldest. Like, because in the scene he's where he's. the director, man. Right, I know, that's my point. Like, he, he, after coming off of Avengers, you'd think like you're, you'd be so attached to Coulson, but the show has done a really good job of making you more attached to the other characters, in my opinion. Fair. Like, that's what I meant. Fair. Sorry. Coulson is so interesting. He's the best character ever. Oh my he god. He hates Coulson, <laughs> put it on the internet, yeah. spread it around. I see what you mean, though. He's like a baseline. Like, he just yeah. kind of he holds tight to, to who he is. He, we know him already dynamically. So, yeah. and, so the other people are popping off of him. And, like, he makes the hard decisions of, like, Oh, it's a minute, like earlier in the season, he's like, go follow the mission even if it means somebody's in danger. Like, he's kind of following in those Nick Fury footsteps and coming, becoming a little bit colder, uh, which I find to be interesting. Because, and I say that 
to complement the rest of the characters, to say that they are above the incredible level of interesting that Phil Coulson already is. Uh, but yeah, I think the scene with Ward where, like, um, where Fitz kind of showed the dark side yes. as, as a side of revenge was really cool, because he's somebody you're just like, oh, no, he could never hurt anybody the whole time, until he gets hurt, and then he's like, yeah, I'll watch this, I can't. And I thought that was my, probably the best scene in, in the episode. And then I also really liked the like freezing power. Like, it was yeah. pretty brutal to see the dude at the tables get frozen, and then fall to the bloody chunks. Yeah, it's like that, isn't chunks. it with like that 911 clip that goes around Twitter all the time where <laughs> Rob Lowe breaks the guy into a million pieces? <laughs> so, this show feels like a global show within the MCU. Like the, uh -huh. we're in Marrakesh, we're mm -hmm. you know, in uh, Casablanca, Port of Casablanca. I like that it felt like a global show, like Shield would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it also just like I like how it, like it maintains like a, a level of grounded like texture type of thing that's like tangible. Uh, like the early MCU had, we've kind of gotten away from it with some of the more cosmic and like people who have just like beams of light coming out of their hands and stuff. Like in the Iron Man days, Captain America Thor is literally a hammer, a shield, and an iron suit. Like the suits, the guns, the way they fight with each other, like the most unrealistic thing is people are turning to ice, which is something our brains can still like texturize and f like imagine feeling it. Uh, and I, I just like how shield is still so grounded at this point. Absolutely. Yeah. Tony, what did you think of this episode? Thought it was solid. Um, Nothing's kind of breaking the top five of the ranking or anything like that, but this is really good, and I'm kind of with you guys. Uh, Ian DeCastiger's performance in this episode is uh, is superb, and we had Clark Gregg on season one, and yeah. he said uh, Ian DeCastiger is quote a beast, and I'm seeing it now. Like in terms of being an actor, that guy's got power. He brought it in this one. It's my favorite part of the episode. I was uh, I watched a movie the other night called Black Sunday, which is a 1960 Italian horror film. Oh, yeah. uh, and uh, and Barbara Steele is in that movie, and she's like kind of a classic person uh, actress. And I and I went and looked on her IMDb, and there was this movie that I was like, oh, what is this? And I clicked on it, and Ian DeCastiger was the main photo. I barely remember most of this. We'll be kicking BD out at the end with Tony. It'll Don't worry. Coming. The first time I've ever left the room with another person, and I'm excited about it. Yeah. Get out. I, I will turn you guys. Thank you. Bless you. <laughs> Um, Tony, it was funny because I watched you kind of in real time, remember him? Because when he first showed up, you were like... <laughs> and then after a few like minutes, he was like, oh, yeah. I know that kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, nice to see him back. Uh, I forgot that uh, season one left some, some loose threads that need to be revisited. Uh, it's a cool, scary power, and he's doing it a lot. This movie, uh, this episode is really trying to have me kind of empathize with him a little bit, but he kills a lot of people very suddenly for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, it's like, I understand you're, you're, you're going through a lot and, and, and you're suffering and people are on your ass, but like, the guy's like, he's like having a seat. No, oh, I freeze you. And the guy's like, sorry, sorry, I stepped on your shoe. He's like, I freeze you. Like, well, yeah, that escalated fast. It was like, I'm just looking for a job to, I'm gonna kill this guy. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Really quick. You're yeah, yeah. a lot of people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Like, the guy, there was no, I don't, I don't know how much hope we had left for, for Ice Boy. No, for all Ice Boy. Yeah. Uh, well, okay, after this, uh, Gemma and Coulson, I love the Gemma and Coulson scene because there's that little fake out in the beginning, right, where uh, it's, it's uh, I, I, you didn't think I'd find out. That's in the trailer mm -hmm. with Coulson, like, but he's just talking about what's in the refrigerator. But I like so much about this scene where um, she's, like, he's getting debriefed, she's getting debriefed or whatever, and um, he asks, if she's making friends, yeah. and she's like, oh, well, it's they, that's so nice, it's hard for me. And she's like, you're not asking us yes. for yeah. my feelings. It's cold! He's, he's, yeah. he's the director. <laughs> he made her fucking dinner. Yeah. He's very nice, BD. He's no, that is like, he, he, she needs food to survive, she works. <laughs> well, I like that dinner thing, too. A, it made me hungry for steak, but B, he has a great point. Uh, making bases, does anybody cook out here? Oh, yeah. So I make an omelet every single day, simply what? so I tip. Not even for myself all the time, but just for the fact that I can make a good just omelet. Make it. You can yeah. do the basics, great. That's all that matters. And I think Holson's got that's what he said. Egg, kale and, and, and fingerling potatoes. He's got it down. That looks so good. It did look good. I've told this story before, but uh, Face My Enemy, which is next week's episode, uh, is got me back into S.H.I.E.L.D. I, I was kind of off for a while, and I went to uh, my friend Brett's house, who was on the show, our show, last week, and uh, he was cooking us breakfast, and he made so much kale, and I don't like kale, and, uh, and I ate so much kale, to, and I, it got me back into S.H.I.E.L.D., but when he picks up all the kale, I'm like, what? Kale season two is the kale season. It's the kale season, commonly referred to as the yeah, kale yeah. season. Yeah, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get a T-shirt. This is Alex biggest T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Don't make a kale season shirt. Um, um, so 
One thing also that I love in this scene is when uh, Jim asks, how is everyone? And Coulson says, Fitz is okay. Yeah, I like that. I need Tony your thoughts and feelings right now. Oh yeah, it was, uh, he, he knew immediately what she meant. Uh, it's, it's very sweet. Uh, yeah, yeah. PT, he's so paternal. He does such a good job of taking care of his people. Even when he's keeping a distance, it's exactly what they need. And that's all I have to say. I didn't know this was gonna be a duel. <laughs> That makes her, that's good. When we, we leave together, we'll settle this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you hear crashing, I will say, we were thinking of like, okay, how can we incorporate old BD in the show, right? Um, and Couple gray hairs. I said mean? old, not oh, old. Um, and apparently, these two pitched an idea of, of body slamming each other. Well, no, him, he's the wrestler. Him body slamming me onto this table and having it break, but I don't think the folks in the back would like that very much, so we decided it wasn't safe or approved. That's why we brought our own table. There we go! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank some really good uh, Mac and Fitz stuff in here. Um, we, he, he's continuing to help him, help him find words of uh, the scene. And then um, he's asking Fitz about Gemma, because Mac's never met this woman. And uh, and I like the idea, because I think like we've all become friends with somebody, and then you have an ex in your past. And so this new person in your life only knows this kind of mythical mm. person as like a negative influence on your life. So I feel like Mac right now just hates Gemma because his new buddy Fitz is dead. All fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Mm. I love Mac though. I, and this is continuing like this is so far my favorite relationship of this season is Mac and Fitz and like he's just such a nice guy and Fitz needs that kind of Consolation, it's good. Yeah, it's that parental instinct that I think Mac kind of has, or maybe that big brother vibe that he, yep. that he kind of gets off. Um, and I, I like that he's almost like Fitch's support system, but also kind of interpreter at times. Yes. Um, I, I love the relationship, so fun. Me too. I didn't mention this in last week's episode, and it was such an important thing, and it's Mac calling Fitz Turbo. Turbo. Uh, we did not talk about that at all, and I'm like ashamed of myself. Mm -hmm. Um, because uh, a thing about Mac that uh, all of you in the audience knows is for however long on, he is on the show, whether it's just this season or all seven years, we'll find out, um, is that uh, he gives people nicknames. And him calling Fitz Turbo is like, is the start of that. And it's really special. It's a cute name. I like it. I love it too. Tony, do you think they're going to be there till the end? I don't, I don't know. And I'm not trying to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. Yeah. I want to experience it fresh and new, like a newborn babe. Oh. Like that cutie. Yeah, that's a number one shield, the newest shield fan. Yeah, uh, yeah I know, I know you're gonna raise raise up a shield fan. <laughs> shield <baby. laughs> Uh Okay, so we also now see Sky talking to Ward. Yes. Uh, Ward's down there, and I'm, I'm actually getting really annoyed where um, like he keeps up almost talking about her father, and then he, I wrote that. Like, yeah, and then he's like, and then uh, and then she stops him, and it's like we get it. Come on. Let's go. Um, but uh, but like, he's just, man, Ward in these scenes, I just want to punch him in the face. Uh, like, we'll talk more when he gets to Fitz, but even in this, like, whole thing, it, he's just like, he's, he's so arrogant. He's like the number one gaslighter, too. He's such a gaslighter. Like, the song Gaslighter was literally written about another actor from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but it really applies to, it's true, it really applies to the character of Ward. He does. But he looks good doing it. But like, he look, does. He, he, it's I annoying. There's points though where uh, he convinced me, he definitely convinced me he wasn't lying. Me too, I, me too, me too. I thought that, it's interesting because last, the, the first season, uh, I didn't see Ward's turn coming. And I just, I just didn't really? see it coming. Yeah, I didn't see it coming. So, looking back now and seeing his performance, it feels so genuine, but you're right. Like, he's completely gaslighting or just leaving these little Easter eggs for her to like pick up on. Um, but he's fantastic. I like. I really like Brett Dalton's performance. Brett Dalton's he's amazing. Brett. We can hate Ward and love Brett Dalton. But he's, he has those kind of critical thinking skills. Good looking dude. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but he's saying he's saying the right things to Sky, I and mean, that's what yeah. it icks me out. Is that what he's saying is sincere and 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 honest and healing if she wants it to be. And I just I'm still so angry with him, like her. I don't want that from him right now. Uh, I just want him to stay in a hole and give us intel. But it's also hard not to think it's calculated. Like, well, every, that's, yeah, every, right. like even if he's being honest, he's being honest in a way that it might also just be advantageous to him to say certain things. Could be. That's not how I felt when I saw it, but you're right. Like, you're yeah, right. I mean, that's just trying to 
analyze it. I, when, he was, when he was speaking, I was like, I, I buy this. I, I think so I'm being lying. honest. Yeah. I believe him when he says he's not, he doesn't plan to lie to her. Okay. Yeah. But I still don't care. I'm, yeah, that's kind of where it's yeah, at. You know, yeah, you know, you've gone too far. Yeah. Uh, we also, um, uh, now we have Gemma and Bakshi, this scene, like, oh my god, is Hydra caught Gemma? Is this the moment? But, yeah. uh, it's just that she knows Donnie Gill. And, the, uh, and they have, I do like this scene though. And I really like when she says uh, she, she was a 17 year old girl with two PhDs and a million questions. Like we kind of talked about this before. But, and, and I really do stand by the fact that if any one of the original team, aside from war, would go Hydra, I think it would be Gemma. I do. Is this crazy? Give me like a boo or a yay. She was originally supposed to be. What? Jackie yeah. in the audience. Yeah, that's right. Jackie knows all the bits. Wait, um, wait, she was originally supposed to be instead of Ward? Yep. yep. Oh, interesting. So you're onto something, I guess. See, I know things. I probably knew that. I just forgot it. That's why I have all of you. Uh, while we're shouting people out, I want to shout out Jeremy. Jeremy, raise your hand here. Uh, he is an awesome collector of props from the show, and he brought a bunch. So when the panel's over, go say hi to him, and he will show you uh, some props. He has uh, spoiler-free props that Tony's allowed to see, and then he has some props that Tony's not allowed to see. So make sure you're keeping an eye out protecting Tony when you're looking at Jeremy's you have stuff. To, you have to come every seven years so I can eventually look at all the props. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are, there, are, are there like actual props from later the show that would really be a giveaway? Oh, um, yeah. Th yeah. yeah. There's some, like, yes, yes. <laughs> I'll say that. There, there's one prop that oh, yeah. is a season four prop that is like, if you if you can think of the coolest props in, from season four right now, he has that. Uh, you know what I mean? Oh, Ghost Rider's chain? Say it again? Ghost Rider's oh, chain. Oh, oh, that actually would be cool. Well, I, I do know that Ghost Rider's in Wait, chain. protect Tony. Tony, yeah. protect, protect Tony. Tony. But Tony does. One thing That's I know. One thing Don't mention the fact that Batman shows up. Calm down in the back. So I have a question for you. Spoiler-free question. What is your most prized possession for your spoiler-free uh, collection? Is it the season four thing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's 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 waving things. For well, something that Tony can see. Listening. Them. Yeah. Um, so he got he got oh, some. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Cool. Do you the, collect non-shield props too? Other. Yeah. He says yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can I have your Infinity Gauntlet? <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah, the option? for free. Um, cool. Uh, when we get towards the end, we will take some other uh, audience questions, too. Uh, but don't forget to hit up Jeremy afterwards. Can I say something about Bocce real quick? Uh, you sure can. He's annoying. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, he, I think he's just like way too overtly villainous. He's like, well, Sky, or not Sky, uh, well, Gemma, welcome to the team. It's just like this really, like, we're supposed to be afraid of him, and he's supposed to, like, indicate, he's, he's showing her that he's suspicious. But it's constant, and I just found his villainousness. I kind of like it because we have Whitehall as like the one who's genuinely scary, and I like Bakshi's like kind of energy, Drippy, army. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then he goes on to be a Mandalorian. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was just looking it up, so I was like, wait, I think that's the guy who plays Alex Jones. But then yeah, it is. I just Act maybe just, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, so back on track, um, we then get, which I, I think we might all agree is the best scene of the episode, the Fitz and Ward scene. Dude. Yes. Um, the Ward scenes were the two best scenes. Yeah. The, the Fitz and the, and the Sky scene. Ian DeCastiger, like, deserved an Emmy nomination yeah. for this show at least once. I, I'm curious, well, I'm not going to not gonna spoil anything, but I am curious to see if uh, they gave him material in this season. Um, should, actually, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Ooh, it's yeah, it's not not Wait 30 minutes and then let it out. Yes. <laughs> I got to say, it's it, oh, totally and utterly terrifying. It, just putting myself in Ward's position in that scene. To one, you're being smothered uh, by oxygen leaving the room, but with someone who you can't communicate with, because he's he's afflicted, he's got this brain damage, and he can't say he's he can't listen and he can't respond. So it's like you're trying to talk your way out of something, and you can't have an exchange, and that made it even more intense. I thought that scene was a little bit of a trigger for me. So on Friday, I went out uh, out here in downtown LA to a um, to, to, a, to an event with somebody, and I got a, I had an asthma attack. And I, I didn't want anybody to know, so I tried to play it cool, but it was me trying to just catch my breath for an hour, and then I just had to get a car and get out of there. So watching that scene, I was just like, oh man, I know how Ward feels right now. I know exactly how this oh, going. It was wild. That's Brutal. awful. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I, I've never had an asthma attack, but I, that's Do you keep an inhaler with you? Uh, it's in my backpack. <laughs> okay. It's over there. All right. Someone so has an asthma attack. But I did not have an inhaler with me that time, and I looked at it, I'm like, oh my that's going on. Uh, of course, of course. Up, buddy. One line that Ward says, he goes, despite all of this, it's really good to see you. Trying to justify, and he's like, I gave you a 
fighting chance. Oh, I want to punch him in the face for saying that. She that's the, that's peak. And, oh, ooh. Did you think they were dead? No, I think he, uh, actually, that's a good question. Did he think that they were did, dead? No, did you think they were dead? When they left the ocean? No, no, no. No, no I, I knew that they were going to science them, their souls out of the ocean. I knew it was going to be okay. But, but I, I'm sorry, Ward in that moment when he pushed them into the ocean, I don't think he's like, I'm doing them a favor. He did, the, he, he killed them as little as possible. Yeah, that that's, that's how I, I think he's like, I could kill them right now. Yeah. Listen, this I'm not a war defender. You know I don't like him, but that was... I hear a lot of war defense. I don't know about you. That's what I'm hearing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that guy sucks. <laughs> hey, I'm, 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 I'm team board. board. I'm team board over here. Uh-huh. No, I know you're not. Um, and then, uh, but then war helps. You're like, they don't know what they're going to do. And uh, that's when we get uh, the Gemma and Donnie stuff. Uh, on the boat, um, you know, and she, you know, I'm on your side. And then meanwhile, Sky skydives, like as her, like That's first right. that whole scene. They're all coming together on the boat. The show did such a good job of creating that moment where Gemma sees Donnie, and like we understand that, she, and she understands the same thing we do. That all he's doing is go like that, mm -hmm. and like you're, you're, it's cooked. You're, right. Well, the opposite of cooked. You're frozen. <laughs> like that. The, the tension there was so good, where she's just trying to keep a little bit of space, but also not back up so much to insult him and like set him off. I was like, that, I really like that. Yeah. I also think it was a great job because, like Colson said, she's likable, and they already have a previous relationship. She's she's the perfect person to go and talk to Donnie. I thought it was a brilliant plan by Hydra. Yeah. Then we have this tense moment where Hunter almost shoots Jenna. And then May gets her revenge from last week, and she shoots Hunter. Yes. And I love this is a tri trip moment. Trim's like, I, Trim's like, I wanted it to be me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So he does have that little. Uh, but this whole, I think this whole scene is actually really intense. Yes. Like because uh, you know, there's the, so many layers to it, if you will. Yeah, I, it, it, you know, I love subterfuge. I've talked about it on like seven other episodes. I like when we know something, they don't know something. You're playing a game. You have to. You know, lie to get in with somebody. It's always it's always fun to watch because uh, there's so many layers to it. But in this case, I was dreading this because I knew, you know, the Shield team's rolling up on this ship without knowing that Gemma is there, and it's going to go down. Uh, but yeah, it kept me till the end. It was good stuff. I just wrote my notes. Gemma is at risk, as if like I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I don't know why I wrote that down. You do Jenny way a lot of question marks on I things, do. and you know the answer. I'm trying to keep Tony on his toes. Yeah. Will Sky and Hunter be a couple? We'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Um, and then so that whole thing goes down, and then this is of course when Sky takes out Donnie, um, which I do think like they laid it a little long thing, but it is sad. It had to I mean, this poor kid. Like, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, up to a point. Well, uh, well, I mean, from the when we first meet him, you know, he just made a lot of bad decisions. He fell in with yes, the wrong he did. crowd. And now he's a crowd of one, freezing men who serve you tea. So, um, fair. <laughs> that's a, that's a bad tea. <laughs> that's a bad, 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 bad tea. What do you do when you get bad tea? Send it back, I guess. I, I, I thought it was like for Joe to answer. Like, oh, I, I thought Joe had some kind of tea story. It doesn't matter. Like, he, this Last guy got me a coffee this morning, he left it in his car, and I'm still going to drink it. So <laughs> if it was bad tea, I'd still drink it. Fair. I would have had to carry it around for an hour. I got here before you, okay? I'm still going to drink it, and it's not going to waste. Like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, not I don't good. waste things. Friends. Uh, there are um, also Gemma saved Bakshi too, which is like a, now this is going to help her rise into Hydra. But the uh, Shield kind of wins out because they uh, there's like a Hydra payload. Who ends up with that? The Hydra payload. The, I, I wrote down. Oh, they, they 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 all care. They were carrying it all under yeah, the yeah, yeah. 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 And that's cool. And I do love when Hunter says to May, "So we're even," and she goes, "We are." Yeah, and BJ Britt's still back there with yeah. a grin on his face. And this, this feels like the sort of damage control version of like the MCU fallout of Winter Soldier. Kind of like, where this is really like an epilogue to like what Joe was saying earlier, piecing it all together with the writing. I think it's pretty It cool. is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah keep looking at your notes. Um, next, uh, the Coulson and Fitz scene, which I wrote my notes, Cousin and Fitz. Good thing no one else has to look at the notes. <laughs> um, and uh, he's uh, basically confronting Coulson about, why didn't you tell me Ward was in our basement? Right. You're holding my abuser in our basement, basically. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I like when he says, you should have told me, and Coulson says, maybe. Yeah, it's a great scene. Coulson is my favorite. He just, uh, what he divulges and what he does and how he does it, it's, he still clearly has so much affection for this team, but he's got business. He's got the, and I like that he was like, yeah, I'm keeping secrets from you. There are plenty of things that you don't know that I know, and yeah, he's he's got a he's got a hard job at Colson. I don't know why I laughed so hard. He was just like, "Am I?" Yes, I mean, when he said it, I don't know why I laughed so hard. Just the, just 
the way that he said that he's keeping all these secrets was just so matter of fact. Like, of course I'm doing this. Right. It's, you know, I, I just, I don't know. His, his delivery in that line was hilarious to me. I don't know why. No, he's warm and loving. For those who aren't in the room with us, Joe and BD are over here giggling together. Coulson. They're having Coulson the best is, time. Coulson is as warm as Joe's coffee that's sitting in my car. <laughs> <laughs> it's two hours. It's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> so then we, we find that Agent 33 has complied. Um, which is you know interesting because we did learn uh, in the episode that Donnie was uh, hydrified, <laughs> Faustus methoded, yeah. all the official terms. And I, I read somewhere, I don't remember where I read it, where it, it seems like, because Donnie was kind of in and out of it, and it's, it's kind of like it's Creel might be doing that too, so, yes. but, but Agent 33 isn't a power, doesn't have powers. So I think she maybe succumbed a little faster. That makes sense. And we were talking with Brett in the previous episode. He was like, I think that Creel has been Winter Soldier, quote unquote. And, and it's nice to have now confirm that not exactly, yeah. but there, it's its own method. And I, I definitely Creel is part of that. This is one of those things like when I rewatch MCU stuff, and I wish they would have known, like, it's impossible to do it. I'm sure when they're writing it, they try to think as far out as they can and be as collaborative with upcoming projects as they can. But we didn't hear like the Winter Soldier brainwash code, like whatever it was, homecoming, train car, all that stuff in yep. Russian, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, or German, whatever language it was. Uh, but it seems like it's the same system, just different wording. So I, it would have been so cool if they, because that wasn't introduced until Civil War. Right, if they could have so, overlapped, right? Yeah, so this was a little bit after Winter Soldier, but before Civil War where Marvel Studios introduced it, so Marvel TV had their version. Imagine if they would have done like, that same spiel that Baron Zemo does. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it just would have been a cool connected thing. Like, it works in the show just fine. Yeah. But as like a nerd who loves the connectivity. We I'll still have two years still Civil War. But I also do, yeah, yeah. I do like that they talk about the, um, Enhanced, which which will lead us to Avengers, or the Gifted, which yeah, will lead yes. us to um, Age of Ultron. With yeah, uh, yeah we're getting close to Ultron. Yeah. yeah, I'm so excited for the 10th anniversary of Ultron. I'm gonna do every podcast that invites me to talk about Age of Ultron. I'm gonna do 57 podcasts. If anyone out here wants to start a podcast, uh, we'll uh, it's we'll just call it the Age of Ultron podcast. Starring Jamie Dura. And it's all about how Age of Ultron helped me realize I was bisexual. Yeah, <laughs> that's the podcast. <laughs> Um, it's true. It's a real fact. You just write a coffee table book about yeah. that. You're <laughs> getting so old. I know. It's Ten happening. Years since Age of Ultron? It yeah. It's pretty crazy. Pretty yeah, awesome. it is wild. Um, but we'll, we'll be covering that on our Patreon in the day. Sure. Um, so, okay, then we have the end tag, um, which is more Sky and Ward. And uh, basically, he's like, I was never brainwashed. Sorry to, like, you don't, I can't say that I was. I wasn't. And then finally, he finally spits it out. After two episodes, which is um, your father is alive. He's looking for you. He's not. He's not a father. That'd be really well That'd be bad. Really bad. Um, and then I'll take you to him. And then of course she's like, her her pressure's going up. And, um, I like that through line of the pressure, uh, the heartbeat monitor. Mm -hmm. That was cool. When I was like, I was just seeing what people said about this episode when I was preparing for this, and I found like an old Reddit thread, and people back then, somebody was like, she keeps monitoring her heart rate. Sky is She-Hulk confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, maybe. We don't know. Maybe she I is. certainly don't. I, her first thing was really Jet. I mean, you gotta think, though, in season two, this was an era of comic book TV shows where any little character that would come out, I would like immediately move. Agent 33 is a really good example. Mm. Like, I didn't know that that was an actual Marvel character. Um, same thing, I mean, I knew Blizzard was, but... Uh, yeah, I didn't know that Agent Thirty Three was. So that I still don't actually. Know I actually like it sucks because I can't do that. I want I like I want to do the same thing because I want to be like, oh, is sure. this character or somebody? And I'm like, I can't because it's going to tell me. I'm going to like accidentally see something. Well, this is perfect because that's when we get into the history of the episode, and I can tell you that Blizzard uh, appeared originally as Jack Frost in Tales of Suspense number forty five, which was in nineteen sixty three, and uh, uh, as and then became the name Blizzard in in Iron Man number eighty six in May nineteen seventy six. He was killed off in the Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 20 in 86, and then Donnie Gill, Donnie Gill is from the comics, the Donnie Gill Blizzard first appeared in Iron Man 223 in 87. So that is the Blizzard history. Okay. And then on October 6th, 2024, it became Ice Boy. Yeah. <laughs> the official term is, is Ice Boy. Right. And then in the comics, Dr. Faustus is a return, returning villain, recurring villain of Captain America, um, specializes, of course, in the mental reprogramming, um, debuted in Captain America 107 in 1968. And again, keep an eye out for our Agent Carter Patreon coming in January. Coming in January? What? Let's get something to do with something. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. Agent Carter. 
yeah, watch it with us and then come on the podcast. Yeah. Um, another fun thing about uh, the, the episode, the Mayor Del Mar, the boat was, um, that boat is actually the SS Lane Victory, which is a, a former U.S. merchant marine ship from World War II, and now it's a floating museum. Cool. Uh, that they filmed in. Yeah, yeah floating museum! Like, yeah. Where's awesome. it, where it docked? Um, uh, where is it docked? Uh, Never mind. I didn't write that. Anyone, anyone know where it stopped? Long Beach. Long Beach, thank, thank you, you very much. Long Beach, for long, long Beach, the back. I, um, I remember them, sorry, I remember them shooting a ton of this show because uh, yeah, I used to work in production. I used to work for Culver City Studios at Dealer No Deal. And that was right around the time Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season one moved into Culver City Studios. So I know that they were shooting around Southern California. So just production wise, I think it's very impressive that they're able to get so many looks out of Southern California to be like a global thing. Yeah. I mean, I, obviously, we're Hollywood, it's California, I get it. But, I mean, it's great. It, it looks great. Like, it's, America's look fantastic. We, we, the, the, the amount of faces that the, the city has worn, I highly recommend a documentary called Los Angeles Plays Itself, which is like a three-hour long documentary about all the different ways Los Angeles has been used. Uh, Los Angeles as itself, Los Angeles as somewhere else, and Los Angeles as something alien and totally different. Uh, it's, uh, it's great. Cool, awesome. Um, before, we're gonna open up to some audience Q&A, but before we do that, did any of the three of you have, have any other thoughts about this episode that we haven't talked about yet? Coles is the best, the end. <laughs> BD, rebuttal. Coles is shocked! Uh, no, he doesn't, I'm just kidding. I didn't mean that as a joke. Don't find me outside, please. Uh, yeah, it's a good episode. It, uh, every time, I've done this podcast with you guys twice now, and both times I've finished watching the episodes and been like, man, I actually wanna go back and finish watching shit. Let's go! I haven't. Uh -huh. I want to. B, you're unemployed. I, yeah, I literally don't have a job. I have no excuse now. Uh, yeah, no, I, I do want to keep watching it. I'm gonna try. Maybe I'll try to. It'll motivate me to stay in line with you guys and just watch an episode on its 10th uh, year anniversary. Yes. Give it up for BD watching Agents of Shield. Woo! Yes. Yeah. So I'm saying I do too much. I say it's not enough. Do you guys remember at the time that this came out? I don't know if anyone remembers this, but uh, there were rumors that Phil Coulson was supposed to be Vision. And, um, yes. yeah. I don't remember that at all. Okay, we have some people in the audience who remember that. Green what? That's like John Diggleby and the Green Lantern yeah. type of rumor. I think they made the right choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah get rid of that guy. Should have been we got a really good vision. <laughs> yeah, it all worked out. I was like, Phil Coulson's number one hater. Just no, everyone knows it. Literally, BD, when we came here yesterday, he was like looking for a, a hot toy of Coulson. I, yeah, it's true. Like, like, we're going to make fun of him forever, but he does like Coulson. He just likes to simulate fights. That's why he's a wrestler. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to, if anyone has any questions, just remember Tony is still in the room, so uh, don't ask us anything that pertains beyond this episode. Uh, Shield, you know, BD, what are you doing tomorrow? Like, uh, <laughs> Not working. <laughs> <laughs> any, any questions, any thoughts? TJ? Uh, yeah, so uh, for someone who hasn't watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., your guys' show is super fun, it feels fresh all the time, and I know episodic breakdowns can be kind of hard. So I'm just wondering, when you guys are structuring the show, are you kind of conscious of that, of making it welcoming and kind of different every time, or is that just pure talent? So, so the, 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 the question is, uh, is uh, how do we structure the show? Are we are we uh, deliberately structuring it to be fresh and uh, approachable for new people and old people, or are we just so freaking good at it? Was, <laughs> what, 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 and Jamie, I think that question lands solely on you. Well, Tony can't work on the rundown, right? Because it's spoiler, because the spoilers, he can't, we can't risk it. So um, I learned when, when BD and I were doing um, our, our former podcast, RIP, um, is, uh, uh, BD did so much work, and I did not realize how much work it was until I started Leo. It's like getting a podcast prepped is, especially when you're talking about a specific episode, you don't want to miss anything, you want to take notes. Um, it's gotten easier for me because now we've been doing it for a year. Um, but I would say it's, the most important thing is not hitting the beats, it's, like, it's just making sure everyone's enjoying themselves that's here. Like, uh, Joe, are you having fun? I'm having a, no, I was, I'm having a fantastic I've already time. cursed. I'm so sorry, the baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 okay, uh, did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Uh, anyone else? Any other kind of questions um, in here? Yeah. So when it comes to the MCU's progression and S.H.I.E.L.D.'s progression, there has been a seemingly split. Where would you have loved to see more of the connectivity um, to the MCU movies from where she'll go. 
where would we like to see more of a connectivity of where S.H.I.E.L.D. goes? Um, I, to, this isn't really a spoiler for Tony because I've talked about this so I can say in front of him where, I mean, the fact that they don't do the snap at the end of season five, it does, it breaks them apart, right? Like, and I, we've had lots of debates about this, whether or not that means it's in this main universe. Some people think that the whole show's in its own universe. My personal opinion is that it branches in season five, that's when it goes off, but like we don't have a definitive answer. Um, you know, um, I feel like uh, Joe did try to, uh, Joe, tell us about talking to Brad Winderbaum. Brad Winderbaum uh, is doing an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. rewatch. He loves the show, but I was curious, because I asked him Who's before, he is the uh, executive at Marvel Studios who runs all of the television department currently. Um, and he said that he's currently doing a rewatch, he loves the show. Um, why is Brad Winterbone watching? Well, why? Uh, that's the question. I talk, Jamie and I were, were at the Agatha all along, and that's the that's what the thing that we talked about is. I wonder why he's watching that. Um, and he does say something about the branching, and, and he thinks that there is a really good opportunity uh, for it for it to have uh, branched. I guess it's a certain point. I moderated an X Men ninety seven panel that Brad was at, and we were chatting, and he asked me my opinion, and I told him exactly what I told you, and. I, and I, the fact that he asked me my opinion, I, it makes me wonder, it's like, are they looking for an answer? Well, then, according to the news, they're going to start surveying people. Oh, maybe they're going to, maybe he was surveying you. Uh, boo. Gross. <laughs> um, any, any other questions uh, before? I also or? will say uh -huh. that with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I'm not going to say if, if anybody lives or dies, but I would have liked to see any of the characters that did make it, and he did, in uh, Secret Invasion. I think it would have made Secret Invasion stronger. Oh, wow. Literally anything would have made Secret Invasion stronger. <laughs> I thought Sky was going to be at the end. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I'm not a hater, but it is my least favorite of the shows, for sure. Uh, I do, it did feel like there were so many things they could have done, and connecting it to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. would have been pretty We cool. don't have enough time for that. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong podcast. I wanted to like that show so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited after you invasion. I hosted the press conference, the first two episodes. Okay, BD. <laughs> I'm kind of, what do you think BD stands for? Big deal! <laughs> no, no, but I wanted to like that show. Yeah. I, and, uh, yeah, I think Secret Invasion should have been a movie to culminate Phase 4. But anyway, Fair. this is a S.H.I.E.L.D. podcast. BD, I know when I when we started working together, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. kind of became my B. The, the last two seasons I, I mostly covered for uh, the site we used to work for. Did you, over the years, do any stuff for S.H.I.E.L.D.? Did you like ever do a set visit or anything? Oh, no. no. I did. I oh. interviewed a bunch of people. There's actually a bird. There was a moment where Chloe Bennett and Clark Gregg started singing a song about that website's name, which in theory should still be on that website's YouTube channel. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it is, but it was pretty nice. Cool. <laughs> Joe, tell us about your set visits. I did two set visits to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. One was for the uh, 100th episode, and I, I don't remember what the other one was for. But I remember, because at the time, I wasn't watching like the show like concurrently as, as we were doing all this, so I was like just reading like reviews. But now, like looking back, I'm like, man, there were so many like historic like sets I was on, I would have like geeked out harder had I, had I watched those shows. I know, I, I, I hate that when you get into something and you're like, oh, I could have been doing this for my job. And I missed it. I missed the window. Um, I, I think that um, uh, we might have a surprise guest coming, but first I think that we should kick BD and Tony out of the room so that Joe and I can talk a little bit about future spoilers. Um, before BD, before you leave, tell the people where they can find you. Living rent free in Tony's mind. I've also been living rent free in Tony's spare room. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, on social media, it's at Brandon Davis BD. I've been working really hard on my YouTube channel, which has been a lot of fun, because uh, uh, I'm doing that work. I'm going to continue being my own boss if I can one day make money doing that. Uh, so that's also Brandon Davis BD. And this week, you'll see Mark Guggenheim on the channel, Michael Giacchino on the channel, and Mick Giacchino. Cool. Uh, stuff like that. Night. So, yeah, thank you. Who's watching The Penguin? Woo! Oh, Woo! Yes. That's what we're doing. Oh, Joe, it's tonight's it. episode. Really ready. Yeah, it's freaking good. Tony, any final words before we kick you out? Thank you guys so much. I uh, really appreciate you guys. I'll say thank you to uh, our usual people. So thank you to Stephanie at the Collective Muses for doing our art. Thank you to Ryan Mira at Yellow Pills for doing our music. And uh, thank you to our producer, Maria, who is currently out of the room but has been amazing at facilitating this. And thank you to her partner, Evan, who's being our videographer. And being Evan! Thank you very, very much. Uh, thank you, Joe, and thank you, BD, guys. Really appreciate you guys. I gotta leave the room. Get out of here. I'm leaving the room. Jack.
Jamie, I want to say thank you. Tony, I want to say thank you. Jamie, I love you so much. This is so fun to do this with you. Anytime. All right, Anytime bye guys. Get that, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go whoop Tony's head. He's going to put him through a table. All right, let's do running. this, baby. I don't want them to hear things. We um, want tables. There we go. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So we have, um, we have seven minutes to go until uh, a special a special guest comes. Okay. So I do want to talk about a couple things uh, that, that pertain to the future. And one is that they keep, even in this episode, mentioning Hunter's ex-wife. And like Bobby is so close. We are two weeks away from Bobby, right? Two weeks, right? Yeah. Looking at Sari in the audience, because I know she's like, she'll, yeah. she'll know. Um, Sari has been on the pod, as has Jackie. Uh, uh, Wave. They've been guests on the pod. Um, I think that's an audience of people that have been on the pod, but hopefully more people. Um, are you like a Bobby fan? I am. I am. So I, my introduction to Bobby was. Does any, did anybody watch Avengers: Earth's Mightiest Heroes? Yes. All right. right. That that's show is so. fantastic. But that's how I was introduced to the character. And then I used to play a game called Hero Clicks, and um, she was one of my Hero Clicks. I think your support piece or something. So I knew who the character was. And then when it was Adrian Padalecki. Um, I was really excited because I was a big fan of Friday Night Lights. Oh, right. Um, the thing is, I feel that, I mean, granted, it's a different take on Bobby, but I was fine with it. But I love the relationship between her and, uh, and, and, and Lance. Um, Hunter? Hunter. Hunter. I love their I love their dynamic yeah. throughout the course of the series. That's why I keep joking that like Lance and Sky are gonna get together because we like that's stupid. But I'm just I'm really trying to trick Tony into uh, throwing him off the scent of whenever I can. Wait, are there any ships from Agents of Shield that you wanted to happen but never did? I've talked about this before, um, but I when Joey came on in season three, I really wanted him and Max to be a thing. I really wanted that, uh, and then I and then he was with Yo-Yo, and that's great. Um, okay, guys, wait. <laughs> Are you ready to rock? Oh, yeah. Let's go! You got Matt and John Yuan here, everybody, from the Deek Squad. Come on! Oh, the Deek Squad! Don't you forget about me. I was gonna sing that, but then I was afraid they'd like can't cut it out of our channel. We get like. No! Oh, let me speak now. Let me speak now. Can you guys each take a mic? So for those uh, listening and not in the room, we've got uh, Matt and John here. They are in uh, one of the best episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yes. The Totally Woo! Excellent Adventures of Mac and the D. Um, it's funny, Tony, because Tony will watch that episode in 2030. <laughs> and, like, like, I was like, I'd love to have you guys in the podcast in six years. Maybe we can get you on a little earlier. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> there will be. That means, you know, we time travel, so it's pretty easy. Exactly. Uh, before we get a little bit into your episode, you guys are here promoting your comics. So tell us a little bit about your comics and what you do. Okay, so um, for, for those of you who don't know about our comic book work, um, we are currently deputy publishers at First Comics, which is the oldest uh, publishing house to cater to creator-owned properties. Back in the day, we did American Flag, um, Grimjack, all sorts of stuff, and at the time, it was just Marvel and DC, and our publisher, Ken F. Levin, was like, he knew all these creators, and said, you created these great characters, why don't you own a piece of it? And so he created, he helped create the company that would do that. It was such an alien idea to comic book creators at the time, that I think about 30% of them actually dropped out. They would come up and say, so what do you want me to write? And he's like, well, what have you got? And they're like, uh, you don't have anything for me? And he's like, no, what do you want to do? The words were English. They did not understand them. And so they just sort of demurred and walked off. But now you've got Image, Dark Horse, and creators are owning their stuff. And we're happy to be a part of it. We, we uh, work on our own titles, which are uh, we have Serving Soups, which is a workplace comedy about process servers who only serve court documents to deadbeat superheroes and supervillains. We have Inspector O, which is an all-ages uh, comic set in medieval China about two ghost hunters, an uncle and his niece. And um, then we have Declan and Chang, which is our homage to 80s action movies, which, you know, hey, you know, it, it, that tracks, right? Yeah. So, you know, um, cyborg mercenaries take on corrupt cops and wind up fighting, fighting a 
robotic planetary crime lord. So, you know, if that doesn't say 80s, I don't know what does. And then lastly, we have Love Town, which is a supernatural noir uh, story set in a fictitious city analogous to late 40s, early 50s LA, where magic is real and it's not really a good thing. And so it uses you up, it will kill you, and it's about the only vampire on the uh, LA police force. Oh, heck yeah, I'm sold. Vampire is all I need to hear to be 100% in. Before I uh, start asking you guys about your S.H.I.E.L.D. episode, I want to bring back to Joe. Joe's our, this is Joe, he's our guest today. Uh, <laughs> um, Joe just finished watching the show, which means he, Last week. Which means oh, he nice. probably, probably just watched X-Men yeah, yeah, yeah. episode. So I, I want to know, because that episode is so different, what, what were your thoughts on that episode? So when we, that whole season is, is just very different um, with all the time jumps, but I love when we get to the 80s, especially with Deke, because Deke is so much fun. I feel that like that character grows grows on you so much, and I love the fact that he, even Mac, like he looks out for Mac, and Mac's usually the one looking out for everybody else, and I like that we see this different side of Deke, especially like a tech genius with, with all this like video game company and this whole like thing that, that, that Deke created and stole all the all the technology, but I I love that I love the the era when we get to the eighties. I think it's so much fun. But I also just love the time jumping, and also that season two. Anybody that's a, I, I'm a big uh, Peggy Carter fan, so yeah. we, we get some uh, some Agent Carter stuff. We're my Deucey fans in the house. <laughs> my favorite show. God, I just love that so much. So I know that before you were cast in the show, you both were fans of the show. Yes. Right? So I'd love to hear about kind of your history as Marvel fans, or fans of the show specifically. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Bring it back! Okay, uh, geez, so, I want to, God, Marvel, uh, we started with Marvel Comics in the late 70s. We're yeah. showing our age here. Um, <laughs> so, roughly around 1977 when we were learning how to read. Um, comic books are really the only way our parents could sort of bribe us into learning at all. Um, and it started out with Daredevil, um, but one of the first comics that we read when we could appreciate comics as something more than just, oh, this is fun, and, you know, toss it aside, was um, this uh, Frank Miller, Bill Sienkiewicz, uh series called um, Electra Assassin. And it centers around Electra and her small war with uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. So, and if you haven't checked out that series, it is freaking amazing. Like, just, just to give you, uh, we're not going to give away any spoilers on it, but uh, Garrett makes his first appearance in that series. Sold. And at one point, there's an exchange where Frank Miller is telling a story, and he's like, I wrote a script. S.H.I.E.L.D. agents are talking about what's for lunch in the commissary, and I get back pages with blue dwarves in hoods and diapers. And he's like, why the script didn't call for that? And Bill Skinnovich was like, yeah, but it seemed like a pretty cool idea. So it is a really awesome, like, trippy interpretation of the Marvel Universe, but it has, it, it doesn't betray the feel of, like, this vast bureaucracy that is S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, so definitely check it out by Frank Miller and Bill Sienkiewicz. It, yeah, it, it was the first story that we read that sort of gave that Terry Gilliam, a uh, Brazil-esque feel. Hell yeah. To Marvel, and so when we read that, it just blew our minds, and from that moment on, we loved uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. as not just, because certainly you had those people in there who were trying to do good and save the world and keep aliens from dominating the Earth, but then you had uh, Nick Fury versus S.H.I.E.L.D., which is another fantastic miniseries, and it's just about how well, I mean, you guys know. Uh, we're, we're allowing spoilers now. We are no yeah, spoilers. Yeah, we'll say Hydra is behind a lot of nefarious crap that S.H.I.E.L.D. has been doing. You know, some of the not-so-good <laughs> stuff. And Nick Fury's like, what the heck, man? <laughs> I've been devoting like, decades of my life to this organization. And it's, I started it's called out. the Nazis. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, like he, he, he literally started his military career fighting Nazis. And now he's working with them, like, unknowingly. But... Yeah, but still, so so that shield has always had a very special place in our heart. And when our managers uh, came to us and said, "Hey, we have a, an audition for Agents of Shield," like we did not sleep for a week. And you told me yesterday that it was for an earlier season. Yes, yeah, it, it, it was, was a, for season six. Yeah, we were uh, we were supposed to be in, but like inner, in, like, yeah, an alien yeah. arms dealer. 
And it, it was really cool because we did not hear from them for a year. And we're like, okay, we blew that one yet again, you know, that's, that's great. Um, and a year later, our manager said, hey, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. wants you guys. And we're like, well, no, they don't. <laughs> no, that was a year ago, man. That I is blew it. old news. <laughs> yeah. They're like, no. She was like, no, no. They, they, they wrote another part for you guys. And we're like, oh, boy. That's, that's frightening. Do you play any instruments? <laughs> no, no. Um, we were stereotypical Chinese children, and we were forced to learn the violin. And, and our teacher literally said, stop. <laughs> she was very kind about it. No, no, she wasn't. <laughs> when she, she spoke to our, our dad, because our dad was like, our, my kids aren't bringing their instruments home, what's going on? You know, when, and she's like, uh, trust me, you don't want them to. And Aww. we took it home once. She's like, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you're, you, we're, we're done here. You know, five dollars a week down the drain. <laughs> But you found what your challenges were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I, I, you know, I feel like I want to eventually dive so deep into this episode because we're with Tony, so my co-host Tony is, we kicked him out. <laughs> we didn't want to get spoilers because Tony loves chopping ball. And, uh, and yes. so if you don't know, their episode is very much an homage to the movie Chopping Mall, which is a very L.A. movie talking about L.A. stuff. Were, were you both well-versed in Chopping Mall or did this episode teach you about it? No, no, no. So, um... Chopping Mall, for a little backstory, uh, the first movie we saw in a movie theater was The Exorcist. Oh, awesome. Um, and that was, I think we were four. Yeah. Whoa! Our, our mom, yeah, we have the coolest mom in the world. She, she took us to see The Exorcist, Devil's Reign, Chopping Mall, all, all that stuff. It was right to Devil's yeah. first movie, just so you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hilarious, because by the time we saw The Devil's Reign, we were like, what is this shit? Yeah. We're like, this is garbage. I mean, like, you know, yeah, it's not scary at all. Captain Kirk's in it, but what else is there to this? You know, like, it, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, The Exorcist was our first. I mean, like, when we saw Alien, our takeaway was, you know, if she just packed the cat first, we, she'd be okay. You know? um, yeah, so we, we knew about Chopping Mall, and um, it was such a an homage that the <laughs> director of Chopping Mall Threat to sue. Really? <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he was like, "Look, you, you, you took my robot, you took my 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 plot, and you know I deserve like a, a director credit, even though he yeah. was not on set for a day. Like he, he was not there, and but he was not happy. He was not happy. Interesting. I would have loved that. Like a Marvel show is. Have you seen Chopping Mall Joe? No. Okay, we're gonna <laughs> come over. Sense. Well. If you've seen the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episode, you're going to watch the movie and be like, oh, okay, but it's still that makes it a S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. I, so I knew from, like, because uh, when the season seven came out, I was doing a lot of press stuff. I interviewed a lot of people, and I, I knew ahead of time that there was going to be a Chopping Mall episode. Yeah. So I watched, I watched it for the first time in preparation. So I watched them both for the first time in the same week, and it is. I did a tweet that was side by side of like of stills, and it's like you. If you haven't seen Chopping Mall, watch Chopping Mall, and then go rewatch their episode of Agents of Shield. I'm sure that uh, the people, our audience here, we all Shield fans, would love to hear a little bit about just like what it was like being on that set. Oh God. Oh. Uh, okay. So, if you ever have a dream where you're like, oh man, everything is going right, and it's and then you wake up, you're a little disappointed that you woke up because you're like, that dream was so freaking awesome. That being on the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. set was kind of that dream. Um, a, the video games, the arcade games actually worked. So, um, oh, cool. You, you know, during lunch, it's like, no, I'm, 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 I'm playing Centipede. Sorry, S see you later. Um, but every, everyone, yeah. Yeah, everyone was just so darn nice. Like, um, from the director to the producers, everybody made sure to drop by and say hello. Um, the actors who weren't, they didn't need to be there. They had no scenes. Like, we got to talk to them all. They, they all dropped by and said, hey, welcome to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, welcome to, you know, being part of the family. And when they found out that we were fans, you know, then they were like, oh, you got to see the ship. You got to see the rest of the sets. And anytime they, 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 did have to warn us not to steal anything. Yeah, I was just going to ask yeah. if anything that you guys did. We, we were, we were oh. going to party U-Haul and steal like everything <laughs> that their mitts on. But 
No, security was pretty good at their jobs. They're like, he gave I that. begged the, uh, the, the props guys to make us uh, agents of shield badges. And he was like, I don't, I don't have like the metal slugs to make the, the badges. And he's like, but I can print you out like one of the, the little things, but that takes like a week and you'd be gone by then. Mail it to me! I'm like, yeah, you have my address. Do you guys know where we live? You're a shield, you can find anything out. <laughs> Do you have Deep Splash shirts? Uh, yeah, yeah. We, um, so, and, and then another, you know, more evidence that they were just super cool, instead of, uh, like, every time they wrap an episode, the last day they bring in a food truck. But in order to commem commemorate this episode and the fact that there were so many guest stars, um, they instead had t-shirts and all sorts of, like, weird little, uh, like, memorabilia printed up. And so we got T-shirts, we got stickers, we got you know programs and stuff. It was it was it's great. We got like a whole pile of Deep Squad stuff. <laughs> Alex, did you make the shirt that I'm wearing? I didn't know. Plug your Tee Public real quick. Oh, I don't know what it is. Okay. <laughs> Search Deep Squad and uh, like you, yeah, the one that you're wearing um, too. I have that one too. It's the lemon. We all know. Yeah, yeah, we, sure. we, yeah, yeah. We got stickers uh, and, and glasses. <laughs> Thank you so much. I have gotten so many t-shirts that these two have with their tea public, so kind of search through that. Uh, Joe, I think you have some questions? How many, how many days did you guys shoot, and when did you guys first have that like pinch me moment of like, I'm on the set of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Ooh. Okay, so I think we filmed for seven days? Yeah, so it was Monday through Friday, and then the next Monday and Tuesday. Um, golly. The, the, the pinch me moment that I had was the, uh, the table read. And we're sitting there, and we just finish it up, and Clark Gregg comes up to us. And he's like, hey guys, you guys are really great. And we're like, Ugh. And then he says, do you want to take a picture? And we're like, oh, we can't. That guy just said we can't take pictures. And he looks, and he's like, F that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, if everyone has a problem, they're not going to fire you. You've already been cast. Don't worry about it. And, and I'm sitting here thinking, no, they, they, they probably could. <laughs> I, I, I'm very nervous that way, like, um, because it's like, you know, okay, they hired me, we filmed it, I can always wind up on the cutting room floor, right? Um, so it, it didn't, that really didn't hit until actually the episode broadcast, you know, and, and even then, technically to this day, we actually haven't seen it. What? What? Because yeah. when, it was at first airing, we were on uh, Lil Henstridge's, yeah, Lil Henstridge's podcast, or her YouTube channel. So we're more focused on that. Oh, you were just like her watch along thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 When we had Clark on, we had Clark on Lido, and he thought it was like Elizabeth's show, so he didn't prepare. <laughs> he, didn't, he was like, we're watching the episode together? <laughs> oh, that's my fault, Clark Gregg, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and so we actually, uh, we would like, you know, see portions, you know, when we weren't doing the, the podcast. But yeah, we, we technically haven't seen it strung together. Like Wait, so time has passed. Is there a reason why you just haven't sat down and watched it now? Yes. Uh, so we haven't owned a TV since 2001. <laughs> um, because we... In two, actually 2000, because in 2000 there was a lightning storm. We were in Austin at the time. We were like, oh heck, don't want our TV to blow up because you know lightning will strike it. So we unplugged it, and then we kind of forgot that we unplugged it. And so the next day we turned it on. We're like, oh, it's not working. Ah, oh, darn it! And we kind of got used to not having a TV. Whoa! Well, Tony and I have more have twice as many TVs as people in our house. <laughs> there are four TVs and two of us. Well, they are very. It, it wasn't until uh, a few years later, in our Brother gave yes, us a call. It was it was it was a it was almost a year later, and he was like, uh, "Guys, so um, the old trade center's not there anymore." And oh, we're like, "Oh, you missed some news." Yeah, we're like, "Oh, we're like, yeah, no, you're wrong because it was there yesterday." He's like, "Just find a TV," and we're like, "Our TV's not working. It got fried." And then we plugged it in, watched the towers fall. Went, okay, we're kind of done. Yeah, like enough TV for the rest wow. of our lives. <laughs> what a crazy way to end this panel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I do, we actually do have a little bit of time. Does anyone in the audience have a question for these guys? Well, yeah. I, uh, I've been a big fan of Agent Shield ever since the beginning. But you know, like towards the end, Deke, you know, he's 
left in, in the 1980s, and does it feel like that, you know, they're trying to tell us that they're going to make it like a spin-off where he's living his life in the 80s, including with you guys, Geek Squad, <laughs> forming a band, and taking out, I don't know, maybe Hydra at the time? Ooh, I'm going to repeat the question for our podcast listeners, basically wondering if there was ever any thought or if they could have had a spin-off of Deke in the 80s, maybe with uh, the Deke squad. What do you guys think? Uh, God, I hope so. <laughs> that would be so, because, okay, don't know how many of you read the comic books, but we always thought that with Deke having a band, the best thing to have would be to have Deke squad face off in a battle of the bands, with Angar the Screamer and Screaming Mimi. Oh, that's <laughs> like, right. Angar that, here on season two. Yeah. 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 So, 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 like, you know, I mean, you go Cosmic Screaming Hippie versus Deke Squad. It's like, that'd be, that'd be awesome. <laughs> you know, but, but honestly, if there are plans, we have no idea. Like, we did not know we were going to be on the show until, like, I want to say 30 hours before they wanted us there. Oh, wow. Yeah. They really, they're good at, like, keeping. A secret, unless you're like one of their, you know, higher tier stars, and then they trust you, I guess, because you know you can actually pay that five million dollars that the NDA says you will pay. Oh my god! Yeah, we've got a copy of that. It's amazing. Great, like, I hope. That's wild. It, it's pretty awesome. If we if we divulge any secrets, we owe them like five million dollars. Even now. Yeah. No, well, well, we haven't gotten any secrets in this whole yeah. time. Right. You heard it here first. Brad Winterbaum was watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. just to give a Deke Squad. I can't imagine. I can't imagine. That's my dream. Um, anyone else? Any questions from anybody else? Back over here. Um, going back to uh, your work with First Comics, um, you've got a lot of great collaborators and, and colleagues there. Um, Phil Bach Brothers are some of my favorite creators. From awesome. Yes, they are. Do you have any particular favorite books of theirs that you can love? Okay, so for the uh, podcast listeners, um, we had an audience member mention our first comics uh, colleagues, the Philbot brothers, um, and which one of their books we find to be the best. Um, I, I, I personally hate them because they're very talented. <laughs> and they're fast. You know, so um, not to be coy about it, but um, our, or my favorite book of theirs has not been released yet. It's really good. Um, like everything that they've done up until now, Cadaver Dogs of Winter, Cap and Freebird, Shotgun to Sugarland, um, all of that is really great. But the book that they have coming out, um, I don't want to spoil anything about it, but it is really the best stuff that they have done ever. Um, and so when you see it, it will blow your mind. <laughs> awesome. I think uh, before we wrap things up, we have time for one more question. Does anyone else? Have one? Yeah, that's okay, because I do. Um, you, t you told me yesterday you saw Jeff Ward recently, uh, Deke, and he tell. I love. I think the audience would love that story of uh, him kind of bringing you into the fold of his con appearance. Oh yeah, yeah. So um, he made an appearance at uh, Galaxy Con San Jose, and we decided to travel up there because he was going to be there. Yeah, yeah. See, right. <laughs> and look at the coffee. Very enthused baby in the audience. Um, and uh, but. We we attended his panel. We we got uh, yeah we got an autograph. We had to, um, but we attended his panel. And it was really nice because uh, you know the people were actually asking really good questions. But I was like I'm gonna prep one in case they just ask like you know kind of fan based questions, which is okay. You know there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but we got to the end and it's like hey. So I asked them, you know you're a writer and a director as well. You know whenever. You, you know, you get the script and like maybe there's a line in there that you feel the character would not say. What do you do? You know, you just trample all over it and just ad lib a line that you think the character would say. Do you, uh, you know, work with the writer? What do you do? And he, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of the writer's worst nightmare because I'll, I will tell them, you know, this is not a good line. It should change, and then I work with them. You know, but, but I never. He's like, I never trample over it. You know, writing. Um, well, okay, cool. You know, that's really nice. Like, but no, but you know, I, you know, you you guys came all the way up here, so she asked us a question, and he was like, you know, what was your favorite part about working on the show? And we're like, honestly, everything. You know, I mean, we're not trying to be, you know, stupid here, but from you know, the catering to the security to you know, the security guards who were really cool at just everything. It's like. What, what, what would I complain about? It was all awesome. Um, but, but he didn't need to 
yeah, turn he, it around like that. Yeah. He, he just he he wanted to make sure that the audience knew that we were part of it, and it was it was very gracious and you know generous of him. Yeah, he was, and so he's such a cool guy. He's really cool. That is such a better place to end on than that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. Uh, Joe, where can the people find you? Uh, at Screen Rant and uh, at Fan Expo. By the way, Victor, right here, he's he's amazing. If you ever go to a Fan Expo. And if he's your moderator, you will get a great show. He is literally the best. I've learned everything from that dude. Um, but yeah, uh, at Screen Rant and at Joe Decklemeyer on all social media. Awesome. Matt John, for the people in the audience here, where can they find you literally today? What's your booth? Uh, we are at booth F36 in Artist Alley. And where can they find our listeners find you on social media and everything like that? I think we're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Instagram. Uh, uh, it's either Ewan Twins or the Ewan Twins. So. As if there are more than two. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it's weird, there are a bunch. Um, and it's like, okay, I, I guess not fertility treatment in China is a thing. Yeah, 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 I, I was shocked to learn there's another brother out there. What is he like? Is this like the Kenny Kanick situation? Oh, it's, oh yeah. <laughs> he, he, uh, Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm no, so sorry. No, no, no. It, um, and there we end again. Another, <laughs> another high note. We, we um, love the dark places. Yeah, don't we? Right. Uh, that's that's we go for you. That's how, that's why we have high resonating. Thank you both so much for crashing the panel. Really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, everyone in the audience. Thank you, everyone listening oh. later. Again, we are loving the time of Hydra. Uh, follow us. So subscribe at Lido Pod on Instagram and Twitter, and then uh, loving the time of Hydra on Spotify. All those all those fun places. We are back. One week from today, Chopping Face My Enemy, hopefully with a special guest. We'll find out soon. Uh, everyone have a lovely rest of your LA Comic Con. Yeah.